today we're going to talk about probably the most important transformation in the way that human societies were structured, and that's called the Neolithic Revolution. Uh, before the Neolithic Revolution, humanity is divided up into these very small tribes. Of people hunt for their food, they gather berries, they're nomads, they're homeless, they you know wander around following the animals. After the Neolithic Revolution, people are going to live in settled cities and communities, and the main way people will get their food will be from farming. It's a fundamental transformation in the way that human societies work. Again, it's called the Neolithic Revolution. It takes place about 10,000 years ago, roughly. It's uneven. It happens in different parts of the world at different times. But we'll say that it starts... 10,000 years ago. And the way that it works is this. People discover how to farm. Doesn't seem like the biggest deal in the world, but it really, really is. When people have to hunt and gather their food, there doesn't end up being a lot extra. You hunt the food and then you and the tribe eat, eat it. You gather the berries and the food that you can find and then you guys eat it. When you farm, right, you guys know what farming is, you know, when you plant the seeds and grow the food yourself, the big difference, and it ends up being a just fundamental transformation, is that you end up with a food surplus. You end up with more food than you absolutely need to eat right away when you make the food. And we're going to call, in this case, farming, you know, as farming as it's invented, we're going to call it systematic agriculture. Again, what does that mean? It means farming. It means the growing of food on a regular basis. And what it does is it creates a food surplus. Before you had systematic agriculture, you had four people getting the food and they got enough food basically to feed themselves. Even if you would sort of swap, uh, you know, a berry for a piece of meat, you had the, everyone needed to work for getting the food. After systematic agriculture, you have what you got in this little diagram right here. You've got three people can make enough food for four people. I'm, I'm averaging that number out. It's more complicated than that. But essentially, before that, you've got four people are necessary to make all the food for four people, and no one can do anything else. After systematic agriculture, if three people can make enough food for four people, now you've freed that fourth person up to do something else. And freeing that fourth person up to do something else ends up being the key to advancing technology, to having more complex government. Because what can that fourth person do? They can start inventing things. They can start making more complicated objects. They can start governing. And one of the key things that that fourth person, the person you freed up, is going to end up doing are they're going to become artisans. Artisans, skilled workers who make products, um, you know, weapons, uh, jewelry, a, a chair. Those artisans can then use their skills. Instead of farming, the farmers can feed them and they can start making more advanced things. So now, once you farm, you enable the human brain to start doing extra stuff in the form of that person who's been freed up from the farming labor. Another big change that you end up seeing in the Neolithic Revolution is the beginning of the domestication of animals. The uh, dogs are the first animal that we end up uh, domesticating. Uh, you domesticate you know, dogs and sheep and cows. We start uh, adapting animals for human use. Again, ends up being a key thing because we start eating the animals and you don't have to hunt the animals anymore because you have the cow right there and you can just go eat it. So that ends up being a, sort of going hand in hand with this. You, you now have systematic agriculture. You have freed up people to start doing other things. You've started to domesticate animals so you don't, again, have to spend all your time going out and looking for the animals to do various things for you. Plus, domesticating animals really helps with farming because you can use the animals to help you pull things, you know, freeing up some human muscle to you know, do other things and uh, enabling you to farm more. So again, this ends up uh, making us sort of leapfrog and go higher and higher, make cities that are bigger and bigger. 
One of those cities is this one right here, uh, Katuhuyuk. Um, this is one of the oldest cities that we have found, that archaeologists have found in Turkey. And this is just sort of an example of, again, the at first, when we first start making cities and stop just, you know, wandering around as nomads, this is what they looked like. This is the, the very, very beginning of the cities that will end up being the cities of today. These artisans get really good at what they do, uh, eventually graduating from making very, very simple sort of tools to working with metals. And we call that next stage of humanity when they get really good at working with metals and when they start working with bronze, the Bronze Age. And you can see here, you know, they start making tools and crucially weapons out of bronze and, and that gives, that just shows the next stage in development, the, the next step in a human's mastery over the environment. The better tools enable us to do more things to become even more dominant over the planet and other animals uh, than we were before. So it's just sort of the next step in technology. This advance in agriculture and all of the things that come with it don't happen at all places at the same time. Uh, it happens in some places earlier than it happens in others. Uh, so far as we can tell, it seems like the earliest place that it happens is sort of that southwestern Asia that we call the, you know, the sort of Middle East here. That seems to be where it happens first, but again, uh, some areas are earlier than others. And crucially, again, what this advance let us, lets us do, what the Neolithic Revolution allows is for some people to start doing other things, for people to congregate in cities and form these larger groups of people, larger groups than had ever existed before. And as it turns out, what happens when you get a lot of people together in, say, a city and free some of them up from the business of making food for themselves, what you end up with is what we call civilization. Uh, civilization, I got to get a definition out of the way first, um, because it involves culture. Uh, a culture is the way of life of a people involving, you know, their dress and their language and their, you know, shared um, components. Uh, civilization is a very complicated culture in which large numbers of people share a number of common elements. Uh, they get very complicated. Again, this is what we seem to tend to do when you congregate in large areas. And the best way that you know, historians can sort of quantify this is that civilizations are composed of cities. Uh, they've got governments. Again, you've got people freed up now to be the, the government. Um, they tend to share a common religion, social structure, writing, art. Uh, these are the things we can sort of very roughly, there's always going to be exceptions, uh, say constitutes a civilization. And as the Neolithic Revolution spreads across the world, as people all across the world start living in cities, start having complicated governments and complicated social structures. Everywhere is different. You know, the Middle East is different from Egypt, is different from China, is different from Mexico. But there are some things that seem to happen in every civilization, every ancient civilization that we can look at. And it's sort of interesting that it happens in, in different places. It means there's something, something important there. And we'll get much more into that as the course continues, but the one thing I'd like to touch on right away is uh, the, the government structure used by most of these early civilizations is quite uh, similar uh, all across the world. And the, the one key common element that I'm just going to identify today is that most of these early government structures have monarchs. That is, kings or queens who rule over the government there's there's not really early democracies in these early civilizations. It appears to be very heavy-handed, very much the, the government, you know, telling you what to do, the king ordering everyone around. That is the sort of earliest form of government that we can kind of see in all of these different cities. And it's interesting that that's the first one. 
So the stage is set now for the rest of our ancient history course. Uh, humanity has gone from these small little tribes into these very, very, very early, the earliest civilizations, uh, clusters of people centered mostly around cities, mostly ruled by monarchs and dictators, and in, into this, this is the sort of structure that we're going to um, start out with in most of the different civilizations that we'll start looking at now, one at a time.